Hey, what's up guys? So this week's video is all about should you take an interest only or a repayment mortgage? And we are gonna to touch on both investment properties and your own residential home in this video. But as ever, before we get started, I just need you all to do me a huge favor and that is to smash the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe. So this is an age old debate. Should you have an interest only or a repayment mortgage? And there are some deeper issues and questions that relate to this. Do you wanna pay your mortgage off early? Do you wanna have large amounts of cash flow? And there isn't really any right or wrong answer, but I am definitely gonna give you my take on both scenarios and where both will work in your favor and to your detriment. So first of all, let's get into the residential owner occupier scenario. Now you used to have the choice when back in the old days before the 2008 crash where you could take pretty much a simple interest only mortgage. But these days, the only really way that you can do that is by taking advantage of an offset mortgage. That means you've got a large amount of cash which is offset against your mortgage outstanding balance and then you charge the interest rate. And that interest rate goes up as you draw more of that money down. And most people watching this video or new to property or buying their first property won't even be able to consider getting into that type of scenario. It will be pretty much a repayment mortgage with a residential mortgage. So we're gonna park this one straight away and not waste any more time on it. But later on in the next few weeks, I am gonna bring you a video as to why you shouldn't try and pay off your mortgage early but you should definitely try and live mortgage free. So more on that in the coming weeks. Okay, so let's get into the investment world, the buy to let. Should you have a repayment mortgage or an interest only? And I am now going through the same question on a real project that I'm just coming to the end of. And I have a repayment mortgage on it at the moment. And this definitely isn't the first time this topic has come up within my own portfolio, but this is the first time I've decided to debate it and discuss it and give you my insight on it. Now, I have had a repayment mortgage on this property for probably about three years. And it's linked to one of my bank accounts, which is great because I can see every single month the mortgage balance being repaid quite nicely. And it's only a 10 year plan, which means that mortgage balance is gonna be repaid within the next six, seven years. So in terms of a single project, the equity and the debt being repaid, being repaid by the income I collect, it's actually quite a nice overall project and picture to have. But when I take a step back and I take a holistical view on one, my property portfolio, and two, my growth and desire to build a bigger portfolio, this actually goes against the grain. It's really nice to have a repayment mortgage. It's really nice to have a balance being repaid every single month and knowing that you have a huge amount of equity in this project. Because my mortgage has been, albeit slowly, being reduced every single month, I do get a real good insight into the equity that I could potentially release. And if you listen to the top, the points in my last couple of videos where I say cash is king and trying to borrow cash when you need it is one of the most difficult things that you can do, it does sort of lead you quite nicely to reviewing, releasing the equity in a project like this for either a rainy day or what I'm gonna do, which is to continue to buy great deals. Now, like I said right at the start, there is no right or wrong. And a lot of this is gonna be based on your personal desire. One, to buy more deals. Two, to hold cash. Three, to pay down debt. Now, in 20 years time, I might not wanna buy any more deals. I literally might have too many or just can't be bothered, whatever it is. and. The only way to increase my income, which would also increase my tax, is to reduce the debt level on the existing borrowing. Now, one of the key arguments for this is that the debt does get reduced over time on an interest only mortgage by inflation. So if you had a mortgage 30 years ago for 20,000 on a 50,000 pound house, that same house could be worth 150 to 200,000 now. If you had that mortgage on an interest only basis, you've never repaid the debt down. 
but the debt is worth a lot less in today's money than it was 30 years ago. And that kind of leads me nicely onto my overall strategy and reasoning for wanting to switch a really good repayment mortgage over to an interest only. Because my view is that if I increase my cash flow, my net cash flow, the increased cash flow will start to enable me, one, to buy more properties, but two, to repay debt if I choose to. Now, don't get me wrong, I am paying interest on the mortgage, so I do have potentially less cash flow. But if you're paying interest and repayment, you will more than likely have a lot less cash flow because the repayment amount is going to be more than the interest only. Now, this does become relevant to the amount you borrow. So back to the deal that I'm looking to refinance from a repayment mortgage to an interest only. I think I can release probably about 400K without increasing my monthly mortgage payment based on what it is today being repayment. And in fact, if I play my cards right and I refinance this with the right lender, I can actually reduce it. So in terms of cash flow from the monthly income, I'm not actually increasing it a great deal and I'm not paying down any debt. But in my view, the, the borrowed amount drives an interest only payment. And that interest only payment is 100% tax deductible because I own this property in a company. Whereas on repayment, it's only the interest which is tax deductible. So straight away, I'm going to be paying less tax because I am in the eyes of the tax world making less money, even though my cash flow is gonna stay pretty much the same or slightly increase. But the beauty of this is that I am refinancing a very large chunk of cash out, which I can go and buy multiple other deals with. Other deals that I'll be able to create more cash flow with and more equity. And that is why I think in my portfolio owned by my company, it is best to get things refinanced, release cash, and allow one, the capital to buy more properties, which adds more cash flow, which adds more wealth through balance sheet, and allow inflation over time to eat away the value of the debt. The debt doesn't get any lower in terms of value, but it becomes worth less. Now I hear and I recognize the argument that if you're in your 50s or your 60s, and you do want to start winding down, or you maybe want to hand over a legacy which doesn't have any debt, then switching your interest only over to a repayment mortgage could be a way of structuring your portfolio with or without a company wrapper around it to start to really bring that down. But repayment does one thing, it reduces cash flow. And when cash flow is key for a strategy where you want to buy and build more properties and allow inflation to eat debt and time is relatively on your side, it is a great way to leverage good money to build and generate more income. So there you have it, my really simplistic view on property, buy to let property, interest only versus repayment. I'm a big fan of both, but I do think for a portfolio in your company, interest only is the way to go. Keep refinancing, keep investing, keep buying great deals and create more wealth and more cash flow. And over time, inflation will eat down that debt. But look, that's it from me. Hope you found the content rich. I'll catch you all on the next video.